first thing we would like to do is create this client connected to the cloud that makes it possible for everybody's PC gaming experience to be as optimal as it can possibly be. And therefore, as a result of that, give you the simplicity of a game console, but the performance, scalability, and the performance of a PC. Something that has never been done before. We're incredibly proud of it. Now let's talk about something else, the cloud. Cloud computing has obviously changed everything. Its impact on computing industry, the disruptions to the industry, the disruptions to the companies, can't possibly be overstated. It's all made possible because somebody figured out that instead of single applications running on each, installed and running on each and every one of our computers, a single installation of software in the cloud over the web serving every user as a service would revolutionize computing. That same service is now possible as a result of being located in the cloud to run on phones and tablets and PCs, PCs of different operating systems, computing devices of all kinds. I could probably guess that it went back all the way back to Hotmail, which was my first exposure to a cloud computing applications. But since then, applications after another have really changed the way we use computers. To make it possible, something critical has to happen. The infrastructure cost of delivering that service has to be incredibly low. And over time, as the infrastructure cost of data centers continue to decline as a result of Moore's law, result of multi-core CPUs, the result of virtualization technologies, it has made it possible for us to deliver these services much, much more cost-effectively. And as bandwidth and broadband continues to pervade the world, and we are now able to access broadband literally in everybody's home, and pretty soon in everybody's mobile device, the accessibility of cloud computing becomes greater than ever. There's no question at this point this is the best way of using computers. Oftentimes, you buy a new computer these days, and there's just no reason to install any software anymore, because all of the software that you use are off in the cloud. Now, the question is, why is it that this cloud computing architecture has benefited applications, has benefited maps, has benefited videos and um, music and books? Why is it that this technology and this incredible revolution in computing has left video games behind? Well, the fundamental reason is because video games is a unique medium of its kind. For those of you who use 3D graphics, play games, you understand this very much. Each and every single frame, each and every single frame of a 3D graphics application was computed right then. Unlike a pre-recorded movie, where the movie is stored off on disk, and when somebody wants to play Iron Man 2 on Netflix, that disk file is being accessed and simply passed along in H.264 format to the end user, where it's decoded lightly using a video decoder. 3D graphics, on the other hand, the application, the textures, the objects, the world is being completely synthesized every time you touch that computer. Every single frame is being recomputed. The lighting, the character animation, the physics within it, the gameplay, the AI. How should the, fight, how should the fighter respond to your, your moves are all being computed in real time for every single frame. And so 3D graphics is, in fact, a rather unique digital medium, and its benefits are very clear. It allows you to be suspended in disbelief allows you to enjoy an application in a different way every single time. And so the question is, what problems do we have to solve? There are four things we had to solve. We had to figure out how to make it possible for our GPU to render not to a display connected to HDMI or DVI, but to render directly out into the cloud. 
to render it in a remote, po remote way, in a very low latency way. That's the first thing we had to do. The second thing we had to do was to create a server system, because these data centers are racks and racks of servers, and these servers are used for general purpose computing. Lots of CPU cores and no GPU cores at all. We had to create a, a system that was dedicated and optimized for high density video game streaming. So this one server has to be dedicated really to computer graphics, optimized for computer graphics, to deliver the performance and to deliver it in a very efficient and very high density way. We also had to create a software stack. No software stack exists today that allows a singular computer to support and to connect to hundreds, thousands, millions of users and make it possible for each and every one of them to have a unique experience. And then lastly, we had to create a piece of software that sits in every type of computer as a client, as a receiver, that allows us to receive the streamed data in a very low latency, very high performance way. These four pieces of technology literally took us five years to create. Took us five years to create. And I'm incredibly delighted today to introduce you to NVIDIA's first fully integrated product, a fully integrated system product, NVIDIA, the NVIDIA Grid. Now, what you're looking at is the NVIDIA Grid. Each one of these servers are designed and optimized for computer graphics. And within each one of these servers are packed full of GPUs, just packed full of GPUs. And all of these GPUs are able to run concurrently, supporting many concurrent users at one time. Initially, we'll be able to support something along the lines of 24 concurrent users on one computing node. The way to think about that is today, your PC supports one. And so we'll be able to support 24 times more concurrent users right off the bat with a computer that occupies about the same amount of space as a desktop computer. So this is the NVIDIA grid. Um, well, let's, uh, let's um, compare it to a few things. So this particular rack has about 20 grids, grid servers in it. It's packed with about 240 NVIDIA GPUs, which gives you an aggregate 200 teraflops of computational, GPU computational performance, which translates to about 720 Xbox 360s. Now, just to put it in perspective, 720 Xbox 360s is 10 racks. It would occupy the volume of about 10 of these racks, basically going all the way down the stage. It would consume about five times as much power as this one, not to mention all the software that makes it possible for us to provide the connection broker with the end user that comes to enjoy the game. Um, all of the uh, load balancing and quality of service provisioning um, and promising that that quality of service is now delivered on this particular piece of software. It is, a, it is a virtualized piece of software, essentially a hypervisor that supports both CPUs and GPUs. Why don't we see what it can do? And so uh, let's introduce uh, Andrew Fear. Come on up here, Andrew. That's it. Andrew is going to, um, is a product manager for, for NVIDIA Grid. Now, what we're looking at here is a smart television. This is a smart television from LG, and the only thing that's connected to it, um, just so, you know, we should take one of those rings, <laughs> there's, there's nothing connected to this um, except for Ethernet. Okay, the back side of this is simply Ethernet. Ethernet goes into a router. The router goes into an NVIDIA Grid. That UI um, that you saw just a second ago, the Grid UI, that entire layer of middleware, 
that UI was rendered in the cloud. That UI wasn't rendered here. As a result, you could imagine whatever UI, whether TV is this model or that model, so long as it has an Ethernet jack and an application processor, that UI could be exactly consistent. You don't have to port the UI and a client for every single one of the televisions out there. Um, Andrew, t what are you playing here? So I'm playing a game called Trine. It's a pretty fun game. I've been playing it for a while now. I'm a big fan of the series. And uh, <clears throat> what I like about the game is, uh, you know, when you tell people, you know, what do you, what do, you do in the game? Well, you're a wizard, so you're a thief, heroes, you're a, you're a mage. I like to think of it as, I'm a guy with a sword, I'm a, I'm a girl with a grappling hook, I'm a guy with a magic wand. And you're all that at the same time. <laughs> That's fantastic. You're not all that at the same time. The, uh, the trine is this magical object that lets you sort of change characters as you go. So when you're trying to solve puzzles and save the world, you can change a different character, you have different things, and you can see here's my, my girl now running around with her grappling hook. And uh, it's kind of fun. It's a beautiful world. It's completely rendered. The graphics are beautiful and smooth. And again, this is something that's just amazing for me to see this rendered all locally right here. That's amazing. And so this is, we're looking at a television that's, um, this is the latest smart television from LG. That's correct. And all, we, all we, we've done is we've taken the grid receiver client and uh, uh, they've ported that grid receiver client to their television, and as a result, once you plug in Ethernet, um, you could stream the video game that's processing on one of these GPUs on a grid server. Now, absolutely. Now, what I love about it is that you know you get access to all these games instantly on a TV. But you know, I'm sure, like me, you know, you you travel a lot, right? You can't take your games with you all the time. You have saved games, like I'm doing now. I'm saving this game, and one of the things that I like to do is, you know, after I'm done playing my game, if I go on the road, like CS. I don't have access to these games. Now, now this is cloud computing. Well, it is cloud computing. You know, the thing this that is I like cloud computing. So, so uh, <laughs> what could you do with cloud computing if you have? Well, the thing I like about cloud computing is that if I bring a device with me, like my ASUS Transformer Prime, I can easily launch the grid application. Now, go go back. Uh, I think that they didn't change the uh, the view fast enough. Go back to, so this is, this is a transformer. This is now an Android tablet, and there's a little client on there called NVIDIA Grid. That's correct. Right? Now, this could be, this could be, a, this could be the Transformer Prime. This could be the Nexus 7. It could be a could Galaxy be a Tab. From HTC. It could be, a, right, HTC Absolutely. One X. It could be, I mean, it could, uh, frankly, it could be an Xbox. It could be anything, right? It has anything with, a, with enough. And it doesn't have to be very much. I mean, a, a it's little just mobile processor. video at the end of the day, right? So yeah. you can do lots of different devices. So you launch this little client, and, and magically, amazingly, the exact same UI shows up. This is the same UI that we showed. That, All the that games was, that I had over there, I have over there. And I think what makes it really amazing, as I said, is if I go on the road, and I always try to, you know, I want to do the right thing, and I, I try not to get into trouble on the road. If you, want to, if you play games, it's a, it's a great secret. You know, don't get into trouble. You play games on the road then. And you can see here where I was in the game. I'll just go ahead and I'm going to go to single player and I'm going to load that save game I had just a second ago. And you'll see that I'll pick up playing exactly where I was on the television. Right oh, no there. way. Uh huh. All right. This is really And see, there, there's my guy with the flaming sword. I'm a big fan of this guy. I like, uh, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty simple guy when it comes to things. And, uh, I like boulders and rocks and flaming swords. So this is, this is, this is fantastic. So first of all, you're getting a graphics experience. You, you're getting a, a 3D gaming experience that is impossible on even a Transformer Prime today. But the fact that you have the game in the cloud, you get, you get all the same benefits that you would have had uh, with Kindle Books or um, any just, of your cloud applications. Just Wherever like you left off, you pick up. Absolutely. Like you pick up your videos, watch them anywhere you want, pick up your games, play them whenever you want on any device. Oh, that's terrific. All right, congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> and so, so the NVIDIA Grid is our first fully integrated system product. And we sell it to uh, MSOs and to partners who are serving MSOs um, and uh, anybody who would like to host and would like to uh, stream uh, cloud games. Uh, today, uh, we would like to announce some of our early partners for uh, NVIDIA Grid. Uh, these are really innovative companies, and they're from all over the world. Agawi is here in the United States. Uh, they're working with Microsoft, and they've, they've uh, been working on streaming Windows 8. Uh, you have G Cluster, which is based in Japan. 
uh, and uh, they're working with SFR, and they're working with Orange. You have Playcast based in Israel, uh, Ubitus from Korea, and uh, they're doing trials right now with Docomo and, and um, uh, Verizon. And you have uh, CyberCloud and Cloud Union uh, doing trials in China with some of their telcos. As you could see, as you could see, cloud gaming is a, an industry that is about to come to fruition. The enabling technology, NVIDIA Grid, has taken us several years to create, and finally it's been put together in a way that could allow these companies, our partners, to deploy cloud gaming globally and in a very, very large way. And so I want to thank all of our partners for joining us uh, with NVIDIA Grid, and um, I look forward to uh, seeing the successful trials uh, with these large telcos and the many more that will be coming. I also want to thank all of the engineers that have worked night and day. You know, the, these projects, this particular project is our first fully integrated system. We had to architect a brand new GPU. We had to architect a brand new system from the ground up dedicated to this application. All of the system software that makes it possible to provision this quality of service and this complexity of service over to cloud, and also all of the client software that's out there. All of these are first of its kind inventions, and it's taken us five years to make it possible. I'm incredibly proud of the engineers that have made it possible, and let's give those guys a round of applause.